Uh, my name's Alex. I'm here from Aperture Labs, um, and my goal here is to talk about uh, a little bit of a, about a, a B2B um, project that we did um, for a client of ours, um, but talk more generically about how we integrated to their ERP system. Um, I've kind of tweaked this as we've been going along, because I've actually been hearing as we've been uh, in our own sessions about people asking each other, what's B2B, what's an ERP system? So we'll start very quickly with some definitions about what B2B is. B2B is basically business-to-business -business websites. When you hear about um, typical e-commerce, the first thing that people think about is consumers buying from a business, and that would be considered B2C, business-to-consumer. Um, when we talk about B2B, it's, it's businesses selling to other businesses. Um, so I'll get a little bit more in-depth in about what the client does. Uh, as we kind of go through this. And there's some unique challenges that come from B2B. Uh, ERP stands for Enterprise Resource Planning System. And what that is generically is a big um, software package that companies use to run their business on. So it will include all of their products, inventories, where those, that inventory is housed, any orders they've got coming in that's, so that they can kind of forecast what they're going to have, sales, invoices, customers, all that kind of stuff lives in an ERP system. And any kind of really mid-sized business upwards is going to have an ERP system, more than likely. Um, and any, not really just any e-commerce website, but any uh, transactional or sales or marketing type system is going to have to integrate with those, those systems. So with those definitions out of the way, I'm going to try and uh, track through here. Oh, there we go. So who is Aperture Labs? What do we do? Why are we here, basically? Uh, we're here to, to let you know who we are, um, let you know a little bit about what we do, and to talk about B2B ERP integrations. Um, so about us. We are a software development agency founded uh, in 2013. Um, we're based in Waukesha, Wisconsin, uh, which is a little bit colder than it is here at the moment. Um, and uh, yeah, we're, we're really focused on uh, web, doing web development for our clients, more narrowly focused on, from just um, web development on CMS and e-commerce systems. And I'm going to very quickly go through the, the About Us stuff. Um, industry served, so we've got a lot of different industries that, that we've worked with. We've worked with retail customers, we've worked with heavy manufacturing, we've worked uh, with restaurant chains, we've worked with school athletics, social and crowdfunding, a lot of diverse industries that, that we've been fortunate enough to work with. A um, little bit of a show-off slide, uh, where all our clients are located. We've got clients all over the world is basically what we're trying to say here. Uh, founders, myself, Alex. Um, uh, my background is all in development, 14 years uh, development experience and 11 in e-commerce. And then my uh, co-founder, uh, Garish, um, similar kind of background and experience uh, with them. Services that, that we offer, um, we offer digital strategy, tech, software development, um, delivery. Ooh, all separated, that's nice. <laughs> delivery, so hosting that, that we can offer for, for our clients and user experience as well. Um, we are a Not Commerce Gold solution partner. Uh, we've been a partner since early 2014, uh, when the partnership program first kind of got started, I believe. And um, we also have four certified developers um, and on staff as well for Not Commerce. And who do we have here today? So myself, and then sitting in the audience somewhere, I hope, uh, Adam, who's uh, our uh, senior NOP Commerce uh, developer and, and really our uh, most experienced NOP Commerce developer. And then Lisa as well is around here who's in charge of um, looking after our clients and helping our clients and ourselves grow. So why are we here? Um, we're here to talk about our B2B project, our, our business to business project, some of the unique challenges that we faced uh, with that project. Um, and how we solved um, in particular. We'll, we'll talk very briefly about how we solved some of the generic challenges, but we'll, we'll dive a little bit deeper into how we solved this integration with an ERP system to make sure that not commerce and the ERP system both were acting on the same data and, and so providing the customers with, 
with the experience that we wanted. So definitions uh, is hidden. Um, so the project. The project was, so, so the background of the, the um, client, they were a traditional offline blue collar type um, uh, manufacturing business. They sell uh, industrial equipment into, into companies. Basically, it's, it's ventilation equipment that they sell into big warehouses and, and things like that. Um, so that, that's kind of their bread and butter. They sell through uh, a traditional salesperson network. Um, so their salespeople go out and have good relationships with their clients. Um, they go and, and make sure that they're, they're servicing their needs, um, and they have their own territories that they work in. They also sell spare parts, filters and things like that, uh, filters, belts, ducting, things like that for the equipment um, that is also sold through that, um, that salesperson channel, uh, through the traditional offline call up your customer and say, hey, what do you need? It's been a while since you ordered from us. Why don't we you know, service your equipment? They, um, and and that's, that's how that industry works, and that's how a lot of you know, similar industries kind of work. They're very new to e-commerce, and, 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 and by new to e-commerce, they hadn't done any e-commerce in the past, hadn't done any automated ordering at all in the past. It was all you know, salespeople keying in orders into the ERP system. Um, so they, they really they have a vision that their customers would like to buy um, these spare parts online. They also have a vision that they could acquire new business um, by allowing um, or making it easier for their competitors' customers to buy their filters from them. Standard type filters, you know, it's, it's very similar to um, what goes in your, your furnace at your house um, types of things. But it, but it was an un, unproven market. Uh, and that kind of leads us to one of the constraints. Because it was an unproven market, we wanted to really take a... Um, what we, what we like to call a, a crawl, walk, run approach to it, where we, you know, everybody's heard of a, a minimum viable product, right? Where we just put out the bare minimum set of functionality to provide something to our users, prove that we've got a market, prove that people are going to buy from, the, from this site, and then as they do, build on top of that. Um, and, and, and by, yeah, by... Uh, it being an unproven online market. Nobody was selling this stuff online. All of their competitors were going through this traditional um, channel. So they really saw it as a big opportunity. Uh, so generically, talking about B2B, some of the challenges and, and some of the things that, that make B2B different from your typical uh, B2C um, systems or, or, or B2C solutions uh, are that we have account-driven payment methods. And, and what that means is every single account um, or, or, or all of their customers we know something about, and often their customers can just buy on their account. They can just send in a PO and say, okay, ship me uh, 100, order, or 100 filters, and th we'll ship those out. We'll, we'll you know, debit their account, and then we'll send them an invoice to, to be paid later. Typically doesn't happen in, in the B2C world. Flexible shipping options as well they can buy a lot of this stuff at once. And so we need to be able to ship both on traditional UPS, FedEx, you know, parcel type shipment options, but also LTL, which is basically a, a big truck shows up at their dock. They load up the truck or, or, or part of the truck. LTL actually means less than truck load. Um, and then we ship that out. Um, and, and also, along with that, some of their customers want to ship on their own shipping account rather than us charging them shipping. Some customers will say that we want, uh, we want to use our own shipping account, so don't charge us any shipping. UPS will or the, the trucking company will bill us for it. Uh, and then multi-channel in inventory, which isn't really B2B unique, but it was kind of, it's a, a challenge faced by these guys. They have multiple warehouses, multiple locations. Um, so we needed to understand uh, which inventory we could sell and which inventory we couldn't sell, because we couldn't sell everything that they had. We could only sell out of one of the warehouses uh, as part of that crawl, walk, run uh, approach. Question so far? What was the EOP system? Uh, it's Dynamics Great Plains. Yeah, so Microsoft platform. 
So uh, project goals, what, what we needed to, to accomplish with um, this integration. First, we needed to sync customer data. We needed to make the website aware of our existing customers. One of the things that they, they really needed to, to do was make it as easy as possible for their customers to take this new approach. So we needed to set up their existing customers in the website so they could just come in and log in. They didn't have to do, go through account registration or anything like that. Uh, see all of their addresses for all of their locations. Um, if they are allowed to ship, or if they're allowed to, to pay on account, then have that available to them. If they are set up to ship with their own, own shipping method or own shipping account, have that available to them. Syncing product data with the, um, with the website. Uh, the ERP system um, houses all of the pricing and all of the inventory information. We needed to make the website aware of that. So we needed to make sure that we got that product data up to the website. Uh, the most important one, um, syncing order data. When the website takes an order, uh, they need that to flow through their traditional fulfillment um, process. Uh, no different to, to if a salesman are keyed in that order or a customer service rep are keyed in that order into the ERP system. That just had to go through the traditional uh, fulfillment process. And then um, syncing the shipment data with the ERP. When they shipped something, they wanted the customer to be automatically notified. Your order shipped, here's your tracking <coughs> number, you know, typical type stuff, uh, without having somebody have to go and key that into the admin panel on NopCommerce. Some of the challenges that, that come with uh, what we have um, or, or what we were working with, um, we wanted a high availability website. Kind of obvious, everybody wants a high availability website that you can get out and order all the time. But we only had a low availability ERP system. And that's typical. You'll have maintenance windows where that ERP system is not available. Um, due to um, the client's wishes, really, we didn't have any ability to do a customization in the ERP. So that drove a lot of our design decisions that we could not change anything inside the ERP system. Uh, data must be up to date. Um, you know, what they wanted as near real time as possible, uh, data to be flowing between the two systems. Um, separated environments. Um, the ERP system, I, I've got a little diagram in a second here. We were hosting the website in the cloud in Azure, um, and they had the, the ERP system hosted on site, very typical um, uh, setup. Um, but we have that, that disparate environment, and we've got a, basically a, a potential for a fault there uh, that we need to, to keep in mind. Uh, and then something that, that we designed ourselves, this, a, this wasn't a client constraint, this was our constraint. We wanted it to be ERP system agnostic. So the framework around the communication would be generic, and then the actual communication with the ERP system would be specific to that customer. Um, so very high level architecture, this is what that all kind of looks like. Um, top left, we've got NotCommerce living in Azure. Um, bottom right, we've got the ERP system living in the, the on-site hosting. And from the ERP system, we're, we're receiving, or in an ideal world, pushing uh, pricing, inventory, and customers. No um, customizations to the ERP system means we couldn't actually push from the ERP. Uh, and then not commerce is, is pushing down orders and then updates to the customers as well. If a customer added a new address on the website, that needed to appear in the ERP system. So, with those things in mind, um, you know, we we went into the planning and design phase of how we're going to do this integration. And these, what what we've got listed here, are really the what we see when we're approaching um, any not commerce customization. These are the things that we have to work with, and and these are the things that we can implement. Um, into NotCommerce to provide a customization without having to touch any of that NotCommerce source code. Uh, that's another constraint that I didn't have up there, but all of our projects, we don't ever touch um, NotCommerce core code um, so that it, it's all built as plugins. And we used, on this project, we used all of these in, in some fashion or another. 
Um, so we've used you know, the event system to, to listen for events. We use service overrides to customize the services, admin tab extensions to extend um, you know, what we have available to us on the admin <coughs> panel, action filters to, to modify the way um, not commerce works, um, customer roles, which is a configuration thing, as everyone knows, uh, schedule tasks, generic attributes. And then one thing that, that's uh, important and, and we always pursue is other plugins as well. Um, one of the things that Andre has been talking about is, is this developer community. First thing we do when we're asked for something is, has, has somebody already done this before for us? Um, and, and I wanted to give a, a, a shout out to Nup Tools, I think, who has built the, um, that's you? All right, the uh, uh, payment manager and shipping manager plugins that we use. <laughs> Um, wherever we can because they're, they're really awesome. If you guys haven't checked those out, if you ever need to customize the way payments or shipments work, go look at those plugins there. They're very good value. Don't put your prices up, though. Uh, so the solution that we, we found out or, the, or that we came up with kind of looks like this. Um, and and this, is, this is really for the communication with uh, the, the ERP system. What we decided was that um, these are secret guys. You can't be taking pictures. <laughs> what we decided was uh, that since we couldn't push, I guess decided is, is a bad word, but since we couldn't push anything out of the ERP system, the website was going to have to control um, the whole uh, data flow, essentially. So, so we, we designed the system around that. Um, and what we put in place was, uh, as you can kind of see down at the, the bottom right there, so we had an ERP service that, that was responsible for communication with the ERP system. Um, and that grabbed its data from what we call the worker queue, um, which is effectively just a table uh, that, that has a bunch of request messages in it. And I can show you what that, I think I've that, what that table looks like. But we have you know, a, a request type, so it might be an order push, a customer sync, pricing sync, inventory sync, uh, the NOP entity that we want to associate that with, um, and then some statuses, dates, times, things like that. Um, and then we have a schedule task that basically just pulls, goes through that um, every five minutes, I believe, looks for any outstanding requests, um, and then uh, process, communicates with the ERP service to process those and, and talk to the ERP. We then have what we call sync requesters, and these are the specific um, pieces of code, I think, that, that decide uh, when we want something to happen. So if an order is placed, a sync requester will say, we'll drop uh, a, a message on the worker queue to say, we need to sync this order, work queue will pick that up and, and then process that. This, this board has kind of a, a, a few things. Uh, the first thing is, if we had these sync requesters, every time not commerce needed to do something, it just went directly to the ERP, we could potentially you know, be very chatty with the ERP and, and, and kind of overload it. So this gives us kind of the uh, what we think of as a funnel rather than a hose. So rather than you know taking a hose and blasting the ERP with all these messages, everything just drops it in a funnel and then this this worker queue is is uh, it's up to the worker queue processor to decide how quickly it will then communicate with the ERP so we can throttle it that way. It also accounts for the ERP being unavailable. Uh, some things are real time, like an order being placed. Uh, if when an order is placed, the ERP isn't available, well that message can continue to live on forever until it comes back up, and then everything will catch back up again. If we didn't have this kind of a system in place, the order gets placed, ERP is unavailable, well, now what do we do? Um, and it's also fault tolerant, you know, regardless of the ERP being down, if the, the connection, network connection is down or, or anything like that, it, it solves for that issue as well. Um, and then this is uh, what the, the worker queue looks like. Um, but basically, we just have the, the request ID, uh, the worker type, zeros, I think, uh, inventory, um, the NOP entity ID, um, and then the date created results, notes, things like that that we have in there. Um, so, and and that, that worker process is a scheduled task that, that just works through that queue, basically. 
to get stuff onto the queue, um, we have these these sync requesters, or, or and and that's kind of a generic term. But um, so for customer syncing, um, effectively what we have is we added a, a, an admin panel tab um, to the Nutcomers customer that allows us to put the Great Plains customer ID onto that Nutcomers user. And I like calling Nutcomers users users rather than customers. Um, and then that gets stored as a generic, generic attribute. We then have a, a, a scheduled task that we'll go through and create the sync request for all of our customers that have that Great Plains ID um, or, or the syncing ID. So your guest customers don't get added. Somebody who's registered on the site but never actually bought anything doesn't get added. Um, and then you know the, the more generic customers as the site grows that aren't going to have that that typical relationship with the company won't get added as specific customers in Great Plains either. We also added customer roles um, that, that aren't here, but we had two custom customer roles. One is, are they allowed to uh, buy on account? And one being, um, are they, do they ship on their own account? Uh, if, and, and we use those roles inside the, the uh, payment manager and shipping manager tools or plugin to allow or disallow um, customers from being able to select those options or be charged for shipping. Um, the things for customers that we're syncing back up to, to Great Plains or, or back up to the website are things like the, um, the, the addresses, billing addresses, shipping addresses. Um, and then also if they're on account, we, we push their credit limit back up as well so that we can determine how much they can buy on the site as well. So somebody may have terms but only have 100 bucks. We don't want them to place a $10,000 order on us. <coughs> and, and like I say, a scheduled task goes through and, and decides when to sync those customers. Product sync. Um, so we, the, the product sync is, is responsible for adding inventory pricing requests onto the queue. Um, it functions in two ways. We have the, um, the, the schedule task very similar to the customer schedule task that says every day we're going to sync all of our inventory and pricing. But then also um, we have an event listener for the NC inserted event. So when somebody creates a new product on the website, that will get synced almost immediately then. And then uh, order syncing. Um, this happens basically in real time. When somebody places the order, we're listening for the order placed event and then dropping that, that order placed um, message on the queue. And we're also doing things like uh, refunds and canceled orders as well so that they can cancel the order inside Nupcomers and that will flow down to the ERP system. Other challenges that we have um, or, or other things that had to be solved as part of the order sync uh, is the payment issue. The ERP needs to know how much has been paid and how much has not been paid. Um, so in the cases that we have a customer paid by credit card and we've taken that money on, on the website, uh, we push down payment information along with the order. Um, and in cases where they do not, we don't push down, or, or we push down that it has an outstanding balance. And then finally, uh, we have the shipment update that that came back from um, uh, from UPS WorldChip, uh, and this is actually an integration with WorldChip itself. So WorldChip, when when somebody ships something in UPS WorldChip, they get the tracking number, put the label on it. That then does um, communicate back up to the website and say, okay, for this order, I've got this shipment, and this is the tracking number, and that then triggers not standard. Um, standard you know, email processes and, and email triggers and what have you for uh, updating the customer and sending those emails out. Um, this, we, the UPS WorldChip actually has these mechanisms built in. Uh, so in this case, we're not polling from the website. UPS WorldChip is actually pushing up to us. And this is kind of what the final solution uh, ended up looking like. So inside NotCommerce, you know, we had these scheduled tasks. Um, we've got the, the three kind of sinkers there for the, um, the inventory, uh, customer inventory and pricing. 
Uh, we've got the work queue processor that you can see communicates with our ERP service that talks to the ERP. Uh, and then we've got a UPS world chip pushing the shipments back up into Knop Commerce. And, and this little gray box um, is a shipment processor. We use a similar kind of work queue mechanism um, for processing the inbound shipments from world chip as well. Um, so that is really uh, what we had here to, to kind of go over with you, and that's, that's kind of how we, we solved this particular challenge for the customer uh, in a whirlwind. So um, if anyone has any questions, I'd be happy to, to answer them. Yes? 